In September, ITC Midwest completed the rebuild of the 161 kV transmission line extending from ITC substations northeast of Dysart to southwest of Traer. A segment of the line is double circuited with a 34.5 kV line that has now been rebuilt to allow for 69 kV operation. The Traer Dysart 161 kV line was rebuilt due to its age and ongoing operational issues that led to increased outages. After an engineering review of the line and the associated outages, it was determined that a complete rebuild of the line was necessary to address the issues that were leading to the increased outages. Among other design improvements, the new line was upgraded using tubular steel structures and incorporating conductor, insulators, and hardware to better withstand extreme weather conditions. This line has a, have had quite a few problems over the years since it was built. Um, and a lot of it is with the area, it's nice and flat. Mother Nature uh, comes in and she throws everything at us. She'll throw, you know, inch ice and we have high winds. Or um, this area also has been real susceptible to wet snow. The wet snow will pack right on top of the conductor and then it gives a big area, area kind of like a, a wing on an airplane. And it picks it up, starts going up and down and, and viol violently uh, um, creates uh, galloping. And what we tried to do now with the new conductor is it's T2, so it's wrapped around itself at about every seven to nine feet. And by doing that, the wing isn't uniform all the way down the line. And, and what works there is it, it'll start to gallop, it'll just kind of wave at you as you're driving by instead of doing a violent gallop to where it tears down insulators, structures, and, and lines itself. And also they can just get together one, one phase to another phase and cause some momentary as well. And it's real dangerous for our people trying to go out in these storms when you can't hardly see or can't stand up and then and they're trying to troubleshoot something. And when you have miles of the same problem, it's very hard to, to go out there and say, okay, we just grab that little piece of ice. Well, it's not that simple. So we're trying to, trying to keep our employees safe as well. There were initially more than 50 objections filed with the Iowa Utilities Board by landowners who were opposed to the initial route proposed for the 161 KV rebuild along Highway 8. ITC Midwest responded to landowner concerns and reverted back to the existing line route, and all objections to the project were lifted, with 100% voluntary easements granted by landowners. The land agents met with the landowners and they, there was landowners that had some concerns with routing and some various issues on the project. The land agents brought that information back to ITC and from that point there was meetings internally to discuss you know, what our options were from a routing perspective, from a de design perspective and the, the team collaboratively worked with those landowner concerns to ultimately alter the route and uh, in a way that satisfied the landowner's issues or concerns. The land agent's role in getting the objections removed is really just communication, bringing the landowner concerns back to ITC so that ITC could evaluate those and come up with workable solutions and then take that information of what our, our solutions were back to the landowner so they had an understanding of what our plans were, which ultimately resulted in the landowners dropping their objections. Effective construction management is critical to build projects safely, on budget, and on schedule. Both project managers and field supervisors play important roles in this process. My main role as a field supervisor is to make sure a project is successful from start to finish. I have phone calls with the GF right away in the morning if I'm not on site to go over uh, what the progress was, where they finished up for the end of the day, what their plans are for the, the upcoming day, and if there's any issues as far as design or material issues, might be short something or whatever to make sure that they have everything they need to make the project successful. Well, safety is important on every project, so when I'm on the projects, we're doing spot checks uh, to make sure the guys are doing, wearing all their PPE, have their trucks properly grounded, doing proper setups, making sure everything is in order. We also have our own internal safety specialists that come through on the jobs too and do their inspections and, and safety audits to make sure the contractors are doing everything that's expected from them. On this project in particular, we had some of the holes where we'd hit some uh, pretty good sand veins and, and some water in there that we had issues uh, getting, keeping the holes intact to get the poles in. So we had to use some extra culverting and then uh, actually plug the holes with some concrete to stop the sand from coming in. Some of the complexities of building the 161 line right through the middle of the small town of Dysart down a bike path and people's backyards and trying to be neighborly to everyone. 
The line was rebuilt along the old Creamery Nature Trail east of Dysart, maintained by the Benton County Conservation Board. ITC Midwest is working with Benton County Conservation with pool resources to restore the trail with improved vegetation and enhanced appearance. ITC is uh, working with us on completing a prairie restoration on both sides of the trail, which was our original goal. Uh, they are helping with every aspect and phase of the restoration, which is amazing, and then also restoring the trail back to its original state. Um, it probably even better than what we had it, honestly, it will be. So uh, every step of the way, it's been open and communicative to get that done. From the time projects are discussed at public information meetings through completion, ITC Midwest strives to maintain open communication and positive relationships with landowners, city officials, distribution utilities, and other stakeholders. We want all the information and all the community leaders to know exactly what's going to happen, no surprises, and try to be as proactive as possible. Some of the steps that we go into is we uh, have a public information meeting. That's where we invite landowners to come. We discuss the proposed project. After that's completed, then we can go back and talk to the community leaders. We can develop a plan. Two unavoidable plant outages affecting Dysart Municipal Utilities were scheduled during construction, with the work completed quickly and safely to minimize impacts for electric consumers. So what we try to do is we try to prepare the city leaders, the council and the city clerk with as much talking points for the council meeting. We also even started talking to them about uh, developed postcards so all the residents, businesses were well prepared and understood that this, that this outage was going to be taking place. Uh, there was a lot of moving parts with this project overall. I think we tried to communicate with the local newspapers, press releases, uh, even the city's Facebook page for that matter. But the goal is to be as proactive as possible. Dysart Mayor Tim Glenn shares the importance of a reliable transmission grid to support the city's municipal electric utility system and community growth, and his overview of the project. I'd say Dysart's a great, it's a caring community, it's very supportive, um, caring about, you know, not only our current residents, but uh, the future growth of our town. Obviously, we've got a bunch of businesses down Main Street. We have a nursing home, we have schools, we have a middle school, an elementary, a new learning center for our little nights. So it's very important and reliability is a big part of that. ITC's kept us informed on what's going on with the project, uh, any updates, changes to the schedule. Um, they've been very easy and great to work with. The line runs through the city of Dysart along the C.R. Roberts Memorial Trail. Due to careful and safe work by the construction crew, the use of matting, and a dry summer, construction impacts were minimal with little restoration required. I walked that bike trail twice a week, you know, and it looks great. I mean, the guys did a great job cleaning up. Uh, the lines look great. Um, it's just still an awesome area for the people of Dysart to enjoy that, that recreational trail over there. The new line design reduced the number of transmission structures through Dysart by one third from 24 to 16, enhancing the visual appeal along the trail. That's the other thing I recognized was there are fewer poles and uh, you see less utility actually as you walk the trail, which is really nice. ITC Midwest personnel stayed in close communication with Dysart city leaders regarding the construction schedule and developed a plan for advance outage communication to community members. ITC did a great job just letting everyone know when they were going to happen. Uh, the outages were minimal and I thought it went really well. I just think that the whole process has been pretty seamless. Uh, ITC has been great about uh, response, updates, um, and we're real happy that it got finished before, you know, ahead of time, ahead of schedule. Following the successful completion of construction, the rebuilt line was energized in September. As a key route to move electricity in this region of Iowa, the new Trayer Dysart line will improve electric transmission reliability and increase system capacity to serve the growing needs of customers. Our thanks to everyone, especially the landowners, as well as Dysart leaders and community members who made this project possible.